objects we create that have served us body, mind, and spirit, whether in tribal cultures or great civilizations, define us and have historically proven to be the means of expanding and understanding ourselves. The body, mind, and spirit all need to be nourished. The body has the most obvious and immediate needs, and our creative abilities were born of these. Our need for food requires that we craft the means of capturing, growing, preparing, and storing it. Our minds are central to this crafting, yet have always required more than that which will simply serve the purpose. Our spirit is the most difficult aspect of being to define. It reveals itself in the same manner as love, known to us by feeling, and revealed to others through action. Though intangible, spirit has been the essential element of human artifact since the beginning of recorded art history. There have been a number of individuals, events, and movements that have changed the role of arts in society, but one of the greatest took place in 1917 at an exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists, which allowed artists to pay a fee in order to participate. When Marcel Duchamp placed a urinal on its back in the exhibition, signed under a pseudonym, dated and titled Fountain, he opened a Pandora's box of intellectual exploration in the arts. The work challenged preconceptions and expanded the role of the artist, yet inspired those who followed to step away from the physical and spiritual aspects that have always informed the arts. With this work, Duchamp, like his contemporary Sigmund Freud, placed the mind on a pedestal. From that moment on, the mind, always too willing to believe it is the center, the driving purpose, the self, became central to artworks that denied the needs of the body and the spirit. For more than a century, the art world, established and controlled by artists, collectors, curators, and critics, has been concerned with the cerebral and distanced from everyday life. In the process, the art world has become increasingly insular, self-referential, self-serving, and elitist. Art, which was once a vital part of daily life through utility, spiritual aid, and form of self-expression, has eluded the masses who do not see the point in understanding something that has no interaction with everyday life. By exploring art history, from the archaeological evidence of our very first explorations through the development of modern art movements, we can better understand and embrace the arts and how they are vital to the human experience. The arts were our first means of communication and one that continues to transcend written and spoken languages. We tell the story of our existence with art. It begins with the earliest moments of expression, discovered in the darkness of caves, images painted by flickering firelight by those who preceded us into the realm of self-expression. Henri Edouard Prosper Bruel, known as Abbey Bruel, was a French priest whose life work centered on these artistic expressions. An archaeologist, anthropologist, ethnologist, and geologist, known for his study and classification of art from the Ice Age, Bruel's theory of sympathetic magic concerned the role of what we now consider art as a means of interacting with the natural world and the spirit realm as an expression of beauty. As Bruel once wrote, it has often been debated whether the art of the Stone Age was the product of the artist's spontaneity, a love of beauty, of art for art's sake, or whether the creations did not serve some practical, some magic purpose. In reality, these two points of view are not contradictory, nor are they mutually exclusive, but they complement each other. No great art can be born or develop without the artistic temperament, which is a passionate enthusiasm for beauty. But without a society which shows a real interest in his creations, the artist cannot live or found schools which will ensure that his technical discoveries and his love of beauty will survive and continue both in place and time. All art has a function, whether derived from utility, interaction with the spirit realm, or intellectual pursuits. Primitive humans viewed the world as interactive on every level, and art was central to the sympathetic or imitative magic that allowed for communication with the unseen forces behind it all. 
It was this passionate use of image and form and the drive to capture beauty that drove the great artist to similarly act as conduit between the unseen world and community and reinvent painting and sculpture. Yet, as art critic Dave Hickey has pointed out, the love of beauty that Abby Brule held in such high regard fell out of fashion in the art world long ago. Hickey once wrote, The arguments these artists mount the detraction of beauty comes down to one simple gripe. Beautiful art sells. If it sells itself, it is an adulterous commodity. If it sells something else, it is a seductive advertisement. One of America's foremost art critics, Hickey has always been one to speak his mind, and his take on today's art world is telling. As he puts it, art editors and critics, people like me, have become a courtier class. All we do is wander around the palace and advise very rich people. Of course, the arts have always benefited from the desire to put wealth on display in palaces, castles, villas, and Park Avenue apartments. This required the creation of beautiful utilitarian objects, elaborate dress, and other accoutrements designed to impress. Today, partially due to a sense of responsibility in preserving cultural treasures, exquisite works that were once part of daily life for royalty and successful industrialists can be found in museums. Those who did not have the opportunity to live among such artifacts due to socioeconomic reality maintain the ability to understand beauty, to appreciate workmanship, to see the value in the arts. Even the lowliest peasant was surrounded by the handmade, from housing to dinnerware, with heirlooms treasured by families. In the pre-industrial world, the hand of the maker was always in contact with the hand of the user. Objects passed down through generations, whether utilitarian or religious, were valued and often imbued with a sense of the sacred. Sympathetic magic is a big idea, and as such, it is just one way of explaining human life, our relationship with the planet and each other, and our intersection with what runs through it. Today, we explore interactive technologies created by other humans and learn how to navigate them, yet our interactivity is limited to the app or game programmer's vision and the marketplace. At the same time, the majority of humans continue to believe what we have embraced from prehistory, that we are actually in a larger interactive sphere, that life itself is something to be explored and navigated as part of a grand design. The arts have always been central to this exploration and navigation, and are as important to our lives today as they were to our ancestors. The marks we make, the forms we bring into being, and the concepts we create challenge perception and shift consciousness. Art remains our best means of understanding what it is to be human, the purest path of awakening, the proven means of creating positive social change and creating a sustainable life on planet Earth.